What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, what we're gonna do is take these two graphs here, find the domain and range of each, and then state whether each of them is a function or not. So starting with number one, notice that we have this circle here. It has X and Y intercepts of negative five and positive five, negative five and positive five. But notice that this circle here has holes here and over here. And whenever there's a hole in a relation, it means that relation is undefined at that specific coordinate. So if this was just a regular circle, starting with the domain, if this was just a regular circle, if these were filled in dots, then we know the domain would be what? X has to be greater than or equal to negative five, but less than or equal to positive five. But because we have these holes here, we have to analyze it a little bit more deeply. We can't just say this anymore. So again, domain looks at X values. So we would look at the X values and just move from left to right. So we're starting at negative five. Notice it's defined at negative five. And let's just move to the right and see what happens. So as we move, notice here all these X values, the relation is defined there. And then once we get to this x value of zero, notice we have this hole over here. So there's a break in the relation over here. So would we say that x cannot equal zero for this relation? No, we wouldn't because of this point here. Because even though for this x value of zero, the relation is undefined, up here for this x value of zero, the relation is defined. And so there is a point on this relation at an x value of zero where this relation is defined, so we can't say this over here. Now, if this was a hole as well up here, then x cannot equal zero. There would be a break in the domain. But because it's defined here, there's no break. Okay, so it's still defined at that x value of zero. So it's defined, it's defined, it's defined. Over here continues to be defined, all these x values. It's defined over these uh, parts of the relation. And then notice once we get to this positive five, it becomes undefined. And that's the only point with an x value of five for this relation. And so the domain here would be from negative five x has to be greater than or equal to negative five, but less than positive five. It wouldn't be equal to positive five because of this hole over here. Okay, and if we showed this in interval notation, we'd say x is an element from negative five to, po sorry, I was writing positive infinity here, to positive five, but the positive five we would put as a circle bracket. So the negative five has a square bracket it's inclusive of the negative five, but positive five has a circle bracket. Now, what about the range? Now, the range of this relation, if it was just a regular circle, what would the range be? It would be from negative five, all the y values have to be greater than or equal to negative five, but less than or equal to positive five. However, because of these holes here, again, we got it analyze it a little bit more deeply. And notice that at a y value of negative five, this relation is undefined. There's a hole there. And there's no other points on this relation where it would be defined. So the y values actually wouldn't be inclusive of this negative five. And then what we wanna do is we just wanna move up the, um, the relation and see what's happening. So with the domain, you start at the leftmost point and you move to the right most point. And then with a the range, since we're analyzing the y values, you start at the lowest point and then move up to the highest point. So starting at negative five, but it's not defined at negative five, so it's not inclusive. And then we continue to move up, continue to move up. Notice all of these y values here, they're all defined, right? all the way up to zero, and then notice at a y value of zero, which is this here, we run into a hole. But notice also at that same y value of zero, there's a defined point. And so there's no break in the range at that y value of zero. Even though there's a hole here, there's another point 
where that y value of zero is defined, right? So there's no break. We keep going up and up. Now, if this was a hole here, then there would be a break. The y value would not be able to equal zero. And then we would have to adjust the range accordingly. We would have to like break the range up into two separate pieces. So continuing going up this relation here, notice, so y value is zero, it's defined, and then we continue to go up. All these y values, they're all defined all the way to this positive five here. And notice that that's defined as well. And so the range ends up being this over here. Y is an element of real numbers. Y has to be greater than negative five, not greater than or equal to negative five, just greater than negative five because of this whole. And then all the Y values could be anything as long as they're less than or equal to positive five. And if we show it in this notation, we would say Y is an element from negative five to, um, to positive five, but it's inclusive of that positive five. So that would be a square bracket there. Now, just to uh, get a little extra practice and let's say that this was a hole here. So we have a hole here, we have a hole here. How would that change the range? Let's not worry about how the domain would change. So if there was a hole here, what would happen is notice that all the y values from negative five, negative five it's not defined, but all of these y values are defined all the way to this y value of zero. And then at zero, at a y value of zero, the relation would be undefined. There's no set coordinates on this relation at a y value of zero. So there would be a break there. And then after zero, everything would be defined, all the y values would be defined to this positive five. So then we would say y is greater than zero, but less than or equal to uh, positive five. So notice there'd be a break. There would be two intervals here. So the range in this case, if we put in this format, this set notation, it would be uh, negative five to zero, not inclusive of either because there's holes for both. And then from, um, from zero to positive five, but it would be inclusive of that positive five because that's a set, uh, that's a filled in coordinate right there. And then in this notation, we would say y is an element from negative five to zero. Notice there's circle brackets, not inclusive of those, or from zero to positive five, and then that positive five has a square bracket like that. Right, so if this did have a hole, that's how the range would look. So I thought I would mention that. Maybe you wanna make a separate graph and describe the range then. The way the domain would change is that um, just that negative five wouldn't be defined. But uh, all the other X values up until positive five would be defined. Okay, so that is it for the first relation. Actually, we have to state whether it's a function or not. So let's put that hole back here. Is this gonna be a function or not? Well, we gotta run a vertical line test. Running a vertical line test, notice there's a bunch of points where it fails. For example, at this X value, there's this Y value, there's this Y value. You can't have multiple defined Y values at a single X value, right? So it's failing the vertical line test here. It's failing everywhere in this area, failing everywhere in this area. So we know this here is not a function. Right, so whenever there's holes, you gotta analyze the, um, the relation a little bit more carefully. Okay, moving on to number two. This one's gonna be kind of tricky. I feel like the domain is gonna be a lot easier than the range. The range is more tricky. So domain, what we wanna do, we start at the outermost left and move to the outermost right. So 
notice here, this coordinate, let's label these coordinates. We got one, two, three, four, five. So negative five and then one, two, three. So this coordinate here is at negative five and negative three. This coordinate here is at negative three and negative one. This coordinate here is at negative one and negative one. Okay, and then uh, these coordinates we'll deal with later. So again, starting at the most left point, moving to the right, notice we start at an x value of negative five. But notice that negative five, there's a hole here, right? So it's not, all the x values have to be greater than negative five, but not inclusive of the negative five because of that hole. If there, if there was a solid dot there, then we'd have x is greater than or equal to negative five. So let's continue on. So from here, notice all these x values are defined. We continue to go all the way to this negative three, and then notice there's a break here. Okay, so what we would do, we would say x has to be greater than negative five, but less than or equal to negative three. It's equal because this is a solid dot there. And then there's a break. So then we would start another interval here at this x value of negative one. So we'd say all the x values have to be greater than or equal to negative one, greater than or equal to because it's a solid dot. All the x values here are defined up until this point. Notice there's a hole here and that's an x value of one. It's also a y value of one. But we're just dealing with the x values. So notice that all the x values have to be greater than or equal to negative one, but less than positive one and not inclusive of the positive one. There's a hole there. And then after the positive one, notice the x values continue to all be defined till this point. This point has an x value of three. So this interval here, we would say all the x values are greater than positive one, but less than three. And notice it's not inclusive of both of them because they are holes. And then after three, notice that this continues on forever. So notice after positive three, all the x values are going to be defined. They're gonna continue being defined till positive infinity. So then we would say x has to be greater than three. Not greater than or equal to three, just greater than three. So notice we have four intervals for the domain. This interval, this interval, this interval, and then this interval. Okay, so putting this in a nicer format, we would say x is an element of real numbers, and then we would go from left to right. So we'd say x has to be uh, greater than negative five, less than or equal to negative three, uh, greater than or equal to negative one, but less than positive one. You could continue this here. I'm gonna continue it here. Uh, we got positive one, x has to be greater than positive one, but less, sorry, but less than three. And then uh, x has to be greater than three. That would end up being the, uh, the domain right there. That's in set notation, and if we made it an interval, notation, we would say x is an element. Let's actually put this a little to the left so we have room to write it in one line. So we would say x is an element from negative five to negative three. It's inclusive of that negative three. Or x is from negative one to positive one. It's inclusive of the negative one, not inclusive of the positive one or from positive one to positive three, not inclusive of either, so we got the circle brackets, and then from positive three to positive infinity. Yeah, looks right, right? So whichever format you state the domain in, either this format or that format, they're both the same thing. Now, what about the range? The range, for uh, this relation, I feel like it's going to be a little bit more tricky.
So what we want to do is we want to start with the lowest point, the lowest Y value. So instead of going left to right now, we're going to go from bottom to top. So we would start at the lowest Y value. And looking at this relation, you might think that this here is the lowest Y value. But it's actually not because of this arrow here. Notice this arrow, this keeps going down. This relation keeps going down forever. And so basically the lowest Y value is going to be negative infinity. Right? So you don't start here, you got to look at the whole relation, the whole graph. And because there's this arrow here, this is going to continue going down forever. Negative infinity is the lowest Y value. And then another thing is you may be, um, you may want to look at these points here initially, but notice you don't even have to look at all these points because this keeps going forever. There's no break over here. So we know that this relation, the Y values are going from negative infinity all the way to this point here, to this maximum point that has a Y value of three. Notice that there's no other point greater than three. So we know that the limit, the maximum Y value is going to be this three here, and it's actually not going to be defined. But notice all the Y values below, they're all going to be defined because of this line. So you actually don't even have to look at this. So you, you might look at this, like if you're looking at this hole, for example, you would say that you've got to be careful. You might say that Y can't be defined at negative three. But if we continue this, notice it will be defined over here. Or you might say the Y value can't be defined at this positive one because of this hole. But if you look at all the Y values of one, notice it is defined. Right? So you don't even have to analyze this because of this part of the, uh, of the graph. So notice all the Y values are going to go from negative infinity. They're all going to be defined from negative infinity to positive three, but not inclusive of the positive three. So we would say the range is YR from negative infinity to, um, to positive three. It's not inclusive of positive three, like that. And sometimes you may not even, um, you may not even see negative infinity in this kind of notation. You might just see all the Y values have to be less than three. So less work than the domain, but I still feel like it's a little tricky because again, you might think to look at this part of the graph, but you don't even have to because of that part of the graph. Um, so the Y values have to be less than three between negative infinity and three to put it in this notation, we say Y is an element from negative infinity to positive three circle bracket. It's not inclusive of that positive three because there's a hole there. If there was like another point, maybe over here, let's say, then it would be inclusive of that three and then this would be a square bracket. But there's no point like that. So yeah. So that ends up being the range. And then is it a function or not? So let's run the vertical line test. And if we run the vertical line test throughout the whole thing, notice that there are no multiple Y values for a single X value. Okay, even though there's a break here in the domain, it doesn't matter. You just run the vertical line through where that relation is defined. So notice there's no multiple Y values here, no multiple Y values here, here, or here till positive infinity. Right, so this here is a function because it passes that vertical line test.